Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. We're going to make some biscuits this morning. My name is Patrick, and a couple of folks have asked me for uh, some guidance and help in learning to make traditional southern biscuits, and so I'm going to make some this morning. So folks out there are going to see this, and they're going to be like traditional southern biscuits, and they're going to argue with what ingredients I'm using. Some folks are very in the you need butter to make biscuits. Some folks are very in the shortening to make biscuits camp. So some different opinions there. Either one can work. Um, some folks say you need to use real buttermilk. We're going to use some kind of homemade buttermilk. You'll see in a minute it's a substitution that works really well. Folks get real into making sure you have low protein, uh, winter self-rising flour, I'm just using regular flour. There's lots of ways to work it around. There's lots of great biscuit recipes. I'm going to show you the one I use most often. Uh, it's pretty much Mark Bittman's recipe for yogurt biscuits, but I'm going to do it making uh, using substitute buttermilk. All right, so let's get to it. You're just in my kitchen. We're doing nothing fancy here today. We're going to use your basic flour, butter, baking soda, baking powder, milk, salt, and white vinegar. The white vinegar and milk are going to combine together to make a buttermilk substitute. We'll do that first so that can sit and do what it needs to do and then we will uh, put everything else together. We'll roll our biscuits out, we'll cut them, and then we'll put them in the oven. Alright, last thing to note beforehand is you need your tools. You need a bowl to mix in, you need a cup, you need a set of measuring spoons, a measuring cup, I've got a butter knife back there, and a biscuit cutter. That's about it. As you can see, Nothing real formal, nothing real fancy. If you don't have the biscuit cutter, you could use a juice glass or whatever size glass you like to cut the biscuits uh, the size you want them. All right, come on over here and set your oven to bake. I like to do 425. There's a lot of folks who will say 450. I just seem to think things seem to turn out a little better for me at 425. Okay, like I said, the first thing we're going to do is the milk. I have here a scant cup of milk. Um, meaning just less than a cup. The recipe actually calls for seven eighths of a cup, so I may have gone a little too far, so I may have to adjust as we go on how much flour we use so it doesn't end up too wet. But I'm going to add one tablespoon of white vinegar to this milk, which I know sounds a little weird, but what that does is uh, kind of makes the milk more like buttermilk. And I know a lot of times, the reason I do the substitute is Buttermilk's great. If you got buttermilk, use it. But if you don't, this is a quick way to do it that you won't have to uh, buy, go out on Sunday morning and buy buttermilk if you don't have it in the fridge. Um, and you'll be uh, in good shape to have some nice buttermilk biscuits without having to have a thing of buttermilk in your fridge that you're never going to use or not make them because you're missing an ingredient. One more quick tip on the buttermilk uh, or the substitute buttermilk. After you go ahead and put that uh, the vinegar in there, give it a stir and then set it on your stove top so that while your stove is warming, it's warming up that milk a little bit. It doesn't need to be refrigerator cold. In fact, room temperature is probably better. Not vital, but it helps and also helps it to, to mix together, to clabber together and form the little uh, the buttermilk flavor that you're looking for. So just set that over in your stove and we'll get back to our other steps. All right, now the next step is get your two cups of flour, put it in your big bowl there. So there we go. Um, that's just two level cups of flour. When you scoop flour, if you scoop it out of the bag, that's fine, but don't pack it when you scoop it. Kind of level it and then put it in here so that you got the right amount. Next thing you're going to want is to add is your baking powder. Baking powder and baking soda, two different things. Baking powder, just a, you want a tablespoon of baking powder. So, right there. Then you want a teaspoon of baking soda. Because you're using buttermilk, that's why you need both powder and soda. Um, if you're using just a sweet milk biscuit recipe, you can just use baking powder or self-rising flour, um, and that'll get you there. And then last, you're gonna use a little bit of salt. Really, it's just like a half teaspoon, so it's not a lot. You can just, you know, not that much in your hand really will do it. Make sure your hands are clean. I washed my hands before I started. Make sure your hands are clean before you start because this is a recipe that I like to use my hands in the recipe itself. So that's all mixed together. That's all you really need there, ready to go. All right, gonna get you our butter next. So we're gonna pause this. All right, next up is the butter. You need a half stick of butter. You want it to come straight out of the fridge so that it's cold. 
and you can just cut the half stick. If you want, go ahead right now and cut an extra tablespoon. You're going to need that in a little while um, at the end, so I have that extra put off to the side. Then, with the half stick you've got here, that's four tablespoons for those out there who may not have butter that's measured out this way, more than a brick. Uh, I like to just cut it into pieces right here on the paper. Makes it easier to work with. Um, and you, what we're going to do is work this butter into the flour mixture that we have. So I cut it in those thin pieces, then cut it down the middle, then turn it on the side. Cut it one more time so you get a bunch of little cubes of butter, and it comes right off the paper there on your knife. One time. Just gonna knock those off in here. After you're done with your knife, put it in the sink. Then you're gonna work with your hands in here in the butter. What you wanna do is basically take these and break them into the little pieces and coat them with flour to start with. So that all of them have flour on all sides. I'm just gonna toss them in there. And then what you do is you pick up each cube down in here and you squeeze it. And you're going to squeeze it in the flour. So what you're trying to do is disperse that butter throughout the flour mixture. So that you get, you'll end up with a flour mixture that looks more like, a little more like cornmeal than the fine flour you've got here. But you just reach in there and just keep squeezing those pieces of butter. Some folks like to use two forks or a pastry cutter to do this. That works great too. I just prefer using my fingers to do it. Um, there'll be some recipes that'll tell you that you wanna work fast here, and you do, because what you don't wanna do is have the butter get melted. Uh, it's gonna melt a little bit with the warmth of your fingers, and that's people's argument against using your hands versus pastry cutter. Um, I just have always done it this way, and so I'm gonna keep doing it this way. Um, it shouldn't take too long. Oh, our oven's up to temperature, it's good. It shouldn't take too long. Um, you're just kind of basically rubbing your fingers together like that with the flour and the butter. You know, you're not, it's not a very precise thing. Um, but you don't want pieces that are too big left over. Um, I like to get them, get it pretty worked in there and just keep kind of turning the bowl so you're working with a different part of the flour and tossing it around with your hands as you go. It's getting pretty close here. Um, step after this is going to be pouring the milk in and uh, making it into kind of a ball of dough that you'll then roll out and cut and then really we bake them and put some butter on at the end there's not much left to do to this it's not very complicated folks think making biscuits from scratch is a lot of work it's really not it doesn't take very long um, and they're a superior thing to any kind of can of biscuits you're going to bring home and womp open on the side of your counter and pull out. Those are fine, but these taste a whole bunch better. So there you go. That's pretty much it right there. You know, you see that there's some pieces that are still in there that are bigger. That's all right. It doesn't have to be uniform. It just is a little more crumbly now. So there we go. All right, so our buttermilk has kind of done its thing. If you see here, it's kind of got some lumps in it. That's good. I don't know if you could see that with my shadow there or not. I've mixed them in. But there's a certain vinegar tang that will be in this now. That's what we want. So we're just going to pour it in. And I've forgotten our, we need a big spoon to stir with. And just stir it up. One of the things about biscuits is you want them to be soft. It's not like making bread where you want to really work the dough to get the gluten to form. Here you want these just to kind of come together just enough. So it's just kind of a light stir. You do want to scrape the bottom though because a lot of the powder will sit on the bottom there if you don't scrape it up. Uh, I have had happen. What happened to my cousin when he tried to make this recipe after I talked him through it very wet dough right now. It needs a little bit more flour. I'm just gonna... It should form into a ball. This is not gonna form into a ball. It's too soft. You see? A little too gooey. So I'm just gonna really just reach in, grab a handful of flour, and 
down there. That's probably a little less than a quarter cup. I'm just going to work that in, and that's going to probably do just right. You want it to be a little bit of a wet dough, not a dry dough, but it does need to come together a little bit. That's coming together a little better now, where it's not sticking all the way around. Yeah. Yeah, like that. That's much better. Okay, so... Get as much off this spoon as I can. It is still sticky. That's fine. But that's going to work out well. Now I'm going to need some more flour again. I'm going to just sprinkle some on the top of the on the top of the dough there, so it's not so sticky. And then I'm going to sprinkle some right here on my countertop. Let me get this out of here. It's going to go right on that spot. There's still some stickiness there. That's fine. I'm going to rinse my hands off. A lot of folks right now would be using a rolling pin. Perfectly fine. Again, I prefer just to use my hands. It's faster. It's one less implement that I've got to get dirty. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more flour on top again. That'll do. Now, I do want flour on my hands, then we're just going to pat it out and pick it up and fold it a couple times there. Not working it real aggressively, but you want to get some layers to it by folding it. It's a very soft, smooth dough. It shouldn't resist you much. That's going to be about it. I like I've worked about as much as I'm going to, and I'm just going to pat it out. so that it's a, about half an inch, quarter an inch to half an inch thick. And I don't worry too much about the shape. I'm going to cut it in circles, and it's tough to predict how that's going to cut up anyway. Try to make sure your middle is pushed down as much as your edges so that your biscuits are roughly all the same thickness. That's about it right there. Biscuit cutter. Wipe in the flour. I'll bring my pan over close here. Just straight down, straight up, and pack them on your pan there. Get as close to the edge as you can. The less extra you leave, the better. So, if you're a little imprecise and cut a little corner out, not going to hurt anything. Here we go. I hear that if you go straight up and down with these cuts, like that, that you don't crimp your edges much, and when you don't crimp your edges much, your biscuits rise straight up more. They don't uh, kind of stick on the edge and rise funny. By the way, if they rise funny, they taste the same, so not a big deal. It's just a visual on it at that point. All right, I got nine biscuits out of that, but there's certainly enough dough left here to re-roll. And all I'm gonna do is kind of softly get it to come together as soft as you can. You don't have to work it real hard. All right. So you see it's still got some, because there's a bunch of flour on it, there's some kind of cracks in it, so I am gonna fold it a couple times. Try to get it on smooth. There we go. Back to the same shape as the others were. And cut that. That. Ah, didn't quite get three out of it. I can get one more. So I am going to roll this one more time. Most of the recipes I've ever read say only re-roll your dough once and then that's it. Don't keep working it. I disagree. I'm not going to waste this. I'm not going to 
my palette is not so learned that I'm going to notice that much of a difference. I don't think I can get two out of it though, just one. There's that. That's just about a biscuit though. Man, it's frustrating. Got a baker's dozen. I'll show you my pan here in just a sec. All right, so there is my pan of biscuits. Most folks, or I hear other folks say you should put them all touching so that they rise together. What I find is those two middle ones then don't get as cooked or cooked the same. And I don't want to burn these outside ones or overcook the outside ones to get those middle ones set. So I just like to leave them a little space apart like this. It's just my preference. Um, that's going to go in the oven. All right, those are in the oven. They go in for about, it'll be about 12 minutes. I'm going to set the timer for 10. Uh, I'll start looking at them then. Some folks say you should start checking around eight minutes. You can start checking then. That's fine. Um, we're going to brush them with butter when they come out. The nice thing about cooking biscuits is now you have time to clean off your counter, clean up your utensils, um, kind of just get ready for the biscuits to be ready and then you're all cleaned up. Or if you're doing other things for breakfast, cutting up some fruit or making some eggs and bacon, you can start working on that right now because you've got some time because they're sitting in the oven. So we'll check back when they're about ready to come out. All right, my kitchen timer just went off. And here's what we're looking at. Those are looking pretty darn right. So I'm gonna get those out. This is about where I like to have them. Uh, you can see there's some nice browning on the top, but it's not dark. And you can see nice layers in the middle there, how these rose up. So then, remember that uh, tablespoon of butter that we pulled aside? I melted it. We're just gonna take a brush here and just brush them on. Give them a nice Shiny top. Some folks out there may be thinking they want to use whole wheat uh, flour. Go ahead, that's fine. You probably need to use a little bit more liquid. Uh, just so be prepared to add uh, a splash of milk. I know we made that buttermilk, and if you're, you know, made it, you're thinking, well, what if I just add milk? That's fine. It's not going to change the flavor so drastically. What you need is a little more liquid at that point, so just add what you need to. You can hear my son in the background. He's humming a little bit. Getting ready to have some biscuits. Um, then uh, serve with on this. Everybody likes theirs a little different. Here in our, our house, we like to just break them open and put some honey on them. That's probably the most popular way to go. My wife makes a great cranberry apple butter at Christmas. That's another really tasty thing to throw in here. Regular apple butter, jelly, butter, whatever you want. Um, the other thing we do is a special thing. Holidays and birthdays, we'll do, this is gonna sound strange to you who haven't done it before, but chocolate syrup. It's a homemade chocolate syrup. It's real simple. It's four or five ingredients and you just heat it up. It's thinner than like a Hershey syrup would be and it soaks in the biscuits really nice. Special occasions, that's not an everyday thing. So here we go. That was just right on there one tablespoon. I know right now they look like they're kind of sopping in butter and real shiny. In a minute that'll all soak in and it'll just be a nice sheen on top. That is how you make biscuits. All right, so there we have it. Uh, to my video production friends, I apologize for the low pro quality production. All shot on my phone. Sound is not great. Lighting is terrible. But that's really how you make biscuits. Um, Pretty straightforward. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. Grab yourself a little bit of jelly or honey or whatever makes you happy. Serve it with whatever else you're having for breakfast. You'll have some happy folks around the table. Have a good one.